thanks a lot for joining us we are so looking forward uh, to hearing you i mean you've been doing some fantastic work for the upliftment of society and that's something that at such a young age i mean we all need to emulate i am just so grateful that you have you're having me for this webinar and that you're both so kind really with your words and i feel humbled and i feel actually very shy i'm like oh my god i still don't think i'm doing enough and you're giving me so many kudos already but thank you thank you so much no but from uh, winning a beauty pageant to making a difference to society and i'm sure it's not optics because it's evident from the work that you've been doing and and so so impressed and god bless you for making such a big difference in the lives of so many people thank you that's very kind of you thank you and thank you for, to tarun actually he's been really uh, like a mentor and a supporter and a guide and really helping me so much along the way so and also for today thank you tarun oh, my pleasure kanishtha Good morning, friends. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is indeed an honor and delight to welcome and introduce Kanishtha Dankar, an Indian supermodel who was crowned Pantaloons Miss India 2011. A graduate in accounting and finance with a first class, she started working as a model. Over the last decade of her work as a model, motivational speaker, traveler, and an entrepreneur. she has met and worked with people from all around the world not known to many but she is also a certified yoga teacher being part of this dynamic and professional environment has given her experiential education on life work and the many different aspects to managing time working in large groups goal oriented projects public speaking platforms social work short term and long term project management This has nurtured qualities of adaptability, adventure, confidence, curiosity, and compassion within her, and are what she considered to be her achievements. In 2019, she spent some time in South Korea, where she volunteered at an orphanage and a women's association. She was also invited as a motivational speaker to the Seoul Foreign School, uh, normally known as SFS, to talk to the sixth grades. about using her platform to make positive impact in the society she competed at the miss india world 2011 pageant which was held in november in london that year united kingdom worked towards prevention of female infanticide and education of girl child in 2008 she also appeared in madhur bhandarkar's film fashion she is a spokesperson for chimning alumni india on sustainability and gender equality and tetra pak india on an ongoing recycling project and also she is an advisor and mentor to the board of a startup co hire it enables young companies to onboard proven c level business leaders to drive key functions at a fraction of what they would normally cost quickly and painlessly Kanishtha and myself are both alumni of Indian Navy School, New Delhi. So, friends, please join myself to welcome Miss Kanishtha Dhankar. You know, our house was on fire, and our house still is is on fire, and it's now under siege by a virus. And there's been a lot of lessons that I've learned along the way, and I want to share some of them with you today. and i feel like now that we're sort of in the unlock phase we only see more and more cases increasing and it is hard because we're all waiting to figure out what the new normal is and how to go about life again so sometimes we either sit at home or we have the you know we sit at home and sort of or we can decide to go out but then we put ourselves at a risk of exposure um so it sometimes it feels like what is the right thing to do now right but for those of us who are privileged enough to not worry about our next meal i feel like you know we can do the more responsible thing and sit at home whereas there are people out there who don't know where their next meal is going to come from and they have to go out and they have to work and that is 
the migrant population in India. And, and I think that is the biggest uh, problem India faces right now. And, you know, we need to understand that what affects the people around us affects us as well. So if our migrant population suffers, we suffer too. And that's why I feel it's really important to talk about our coexistence with each other and that with the planet and our environment, especially for a future, a future where we wish to go back to some form of normal that we knew. And, you know, some form of a healthy and happy life where we're not worried about, you know, meeting someone or greeting someone and kind of contracting a virus or a disease because it's no fun to wear a mask all the time and it's no fun to have. Thus, we must understand our dependency on each other and our coexistence with each other. And much before, much before the pandemic, our planet was already facing severe climate crisis. If you think about it, there was the Australian fires, the icebergs melting, the climate summits where Greta Thunberg was speaking. There were so many of them. There were plastics in our oceans and they were wiping all, out all kinds of life. And I feel that the human condition is such that until something happens to us personally, we can't completely grasp what it means. So that's why I feel like we must understand our dependency on our environment and that that is truly the key to our survival. So if you think about it and if you sort of, if you just read the news, the last 2.5 to three months have really given the planet and nature time to really reboot. And, you know, worldwide there's been news about old and new life forms, you know, emerging where they didn't. So now we have to look at what we were doing and what we were doing wrong back then. I feel like before the pandemic, we were all sort of functioning in a way, we were just functioning every day, just functioning, functioning, functioning. Even companies, organizations, especially like manufacturing companies, oil companies, everyone, everyone was just sort of working in a way where they couldn't really pause and stop and do the right thing because it felt like all their systems or all the governments or all the policies or just everything was sort of set in a way where if you take out like, it's sort of like that game Jenga, if you have played it, you take out one uh, block from the mountain that you're pulling and everything falls apart. And it's, to me, it felt like that, that everything was so set in a way that even if we try to do one right thing by pulling one wrong thing out, the whole system would collapse. But now, because of the pandemic, there has been a major pause, you know, and where governments or companies or organizations thought they could never stop because there would be such a huge economic crisis. A pandemic has forced us to go through that. And it shows us that, that maybe there is a chance. There is a chance for all of us to stop and start doing things in the right way. Because otherwise, this pandemic that we're facing now is the future of our planet. to learn so much from what you're doing. And I've read so many amazing things about Supra Stereo on the website and all the values. And it's really, really inspiring because I know that the core of Supra Stereo is also to have a sustainable outlook to, to the future and do things with like, you know, value driven sort of goals. And um, this is where I feel like you come in and, you know, technology has always been such a carrier of growth in every aspect of life. And uh, it's, it's sort of the future. And if we sort of just focus on the situation today, and this is, this is just to maybe, you know, I don't know, plant a seed in your mind or have you think about something. Maybe you, maybe, I mean, not even maybe, I'm sure you're all, you are all geniuses, but maybe you're going to have a side project or maybe this is going to plant a seed to do something different. Because if you think about the pandemic today, I feel like technology plays such a huge role in how to solve a pandemic like this because i really believe that um, you know both both to combat to combat the immediate pandemic and to build like resilience into our future health systems technology is really central to the solution because there could be so many new ways of collecting data and also you know comparing the data across countries obviously based on lots of you know, relevant data and it can help diagnose people and track and treat people 
and of course you know without um, sort of dealing with the privacy issues and things that we are you know dealing with at the moment with all the new data that's come out uh, but yeah I feel like technology has a huge role to play to help cure pandemics as well because there's so much good that can come out of it. The most important message that I want to leave you today with is recycling. And uh, that's what I do at home. I've been segregating my trash at home for the last six years. Um, it's really simple, you know. You have two bins. One is your wet waste and one is your dry waste. And I feel like recycling is such an urgent matter. And it has everything to do with what we're facing today because, you know, if we don't have a clean surrounding, then we don't have a healthy life. And I feel like this thought really parallels the pandemic. If we don't have a clean environment, we don't have a healthy life. So if you can see what I'm trying to say. So I really believe that to move forward, sustainability in every aspect is really important. And that's where recycling comes in. And also, of course, like understanding that you know, all our lives are equal. That's another huge lesson from this pandemic is that we are all equal, no matter who it is, whether it's a poor person on the street or someone who's really, really rich or just someone in the middle. We are all equal. We all affect each other's lives. And this is my personal message to you that sustainability is about looking at every aspect in your life, whether it's environment or human or gender. As a woman, as a man, we're all equal. We're, we all have our unique qualities, of course, but we're all equal. And the way forward into the future is, you know, sustainably moving forward. And please, if you can, recycle. Anishtha, thanks for your message. Um, you belong to the cool fashion industry. What inspired you to choose sustainability as a focus area? You know, I think uh, the cool fashion industry, I have to agree, it is very cool because there is a lot of room to be yourself. But also what I really liked about being in the industry and why I wanted to be in it was because of all the travel that I got to do. And through my travel and my exposure and living in other countries, I could draw parallels in like, you know, to what we have in India and what suppose, for example, how Germany is or how France is or just just how developed countries and developing countries are different, you know, and how we do things or how we recycle. And when I started picking up these habits and I started uh, sort of being exposed to how things can be done differently, that's when sort of all these ideas just you know, they just every day, this is all I think about, like my mind is always just thinking about how can I do this more sustainably? And also, of course, being in the fashion industry, which is a huge contributor to uh, a lot of environmental pollution, you know, you read these articles every day, I felt like, I felt a personal conscious responsibility, because I am part of that industry. And, and what I do for a living is to, you know, display fashion and clothing, which adds to so much of the environmental pollution and damage. So it just felt like I had to do something that had to, you know, parallel what I'm doing for the better. And it made me also start making more sustainable fashion choices. And, and the good thing is, just to add to all of this, is that there are a lot of fashion brands now that are focusing on sustainability. And uh, you can read a lot of, about, you know, where your clothes are made, how they were made, how much uh, CO2 was, you know, used in the process or how much water there's and how to sort of close the fashion loop and make it circular. There's a lot of information about that online. So I think just belonging to the industry, the experience that I've gained from it, from traveling through the work that I've been exposed to has what has, you know, taught me. It's a, it's a topic which is very close to my heart. Uh, Kanishta and I am doing my bit uh, to 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 save this environment and I've posted that as well that you know uh, I think uh, 
I, I mean, my dustbins, if I have to say about hardly, you know, in a week is what it goes out from my house uh, as part of the dusting that we do, uh, because uh, starting from your vegetable peels to, you know, whatever uh, vegetables that you wash, etc., literally can be, uh, you know, uh, recycled, you know, yeah. um, uh, I mean, and and it's very hard to see and believe that you know why can't we really uh, do uh, recycle it? Because you have to just put it in the pot and and it becomes a compost. You know, I'm happy to run a session on that one as well because you know it's as simple as that actually, and and it gives a lot of pleasure when you see a plant growing in that small pot as well, and. Uh, a small effort that I put in is that whatever the RO water, because that's the simplest thing on earth we can do at this point in time, because we most of us stay in flats. So the RO water that we collect, uh, you know, uh, generates uh, a, a double the amount or more than that as a waste water. You know, that can easily be used for mopping and washing and even your clothes. You know, so I I collect almost seven to eight buckets of water uh, for for you know a small RO. Thing that I collect, and and it gives me a lot of pleasure. And as this thing, a small contribution from my side to the environment. Uh, my question is regarding any one incident that you might have in your past that has changed your perception. Because I don't think everybody from the childhood thinks about these things very promptly. But at some point of time in life, or some incident or some thought, definitely triggers this into them. And so. What was that in your perspective, in your case? I think that, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind as you ask that is, I remember that I was, I was living in Cape Town. Actually, I went there for the first time in 2014 and I lived there for three months. And uh, the house that I was living, that I was sharing it with, 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 the, with, the people that I was sharing the house with, they were recycling. Okay, so I got used to doing this. And it became so simple. Well, thank you, Karishtha. It was wonderful, the last 60 minutes, what we heard from you. So just on the last question, uh, so to let you know, 60% of my reportees are women. And that's been there. So Shalini also reported to me at one point of time. Even our IT head is a woman. So. Secondly, I'm not a millennial, but I still manage 4,000 millennials, including two at my home, my son and daughter. <laughs> who are millennials. So wonderful to hear about it. And I think uh, uh, what you spoke about, which was really wonderful to hear from you, is that technology would be central to solution, data analytics, etc. I'm sure people in this group would have really loved hearing this, but I'm personally aware where uh, one of the groups which I'm involved with, IIT Council, they're doing a wonderful job in Mumbai where they've set up this whole thing at NSCI Dome where it's been done by Dr. Lakadwala where contactless you know, testing of people is happening, data is being collected. They're going to use, I think, x-rays to find out whether a person is affected or not. So I think you really touched upon the right thing about data analytics. They're going to set up this mega labs which will be done in Mumbai University. Uh, uh, and it should be operational on 1st of August. So a lot of data, I think, which is going to be done there. And obviously, in addition to that, I think a lot of uh, people are trying to use robots uh, to see if instead of the healthcare workers, you know, can you have a robot going to a patient's place and then have the various you know, equipment, et cetera, by which he can check. And then the data goes to a central control room where they can do the analysis. So a really excellent point, which was asked for you. And also, I think really which touched us was, yes, I think the choices we make today is going to impact big time tomorrow. And that's very, very key. And I can tell you, I can come to you that Sopra Steady as a group, you did mention at the beginning, uh, we have a huge focus on sustainability. Uh, we are, have been focusing a lot on uh, the social activities, both at the group level as well as in India. Uh, we've been rated very, very high by some of the rating groups as well as by our Customers, in fact, there are some of our customers. We need to be at a particular rating in case if we can serve them for for CSR activities. So that's something which is very key. In fact, last year on the Women's Day, I promised uh, the head of uh, Noida Deaf Society that we would hire five people from them in the next one year to make them employable at our place. 
and within three months we got five of them and uh, today they are working in finance they're working in admin they're working in it and if you meet them you won't be able to even find out that they're lesser able with their you know voice and hearing impairment so we made them productive so this is something which i think will will really continue to work upon uh obviously other thing which you said was really again very very key for all of us especially people in the it industry where i think we are among the privileged part of the society and how we can actually use our privilege to go and contribute back to the society i think we need to do a lot more and that's where you know when we start thinking about that we are all equal the moment you start thinking from that perspective possibly it will change changes a lot but really really it was great to hear your thoughts obviously someone coming from fashion industry to talk about sustainability was a slightly different but i think you put your point forward to us uh, i'm sure our people are looking forward to hearing and interacting with you more but yes i think your own initiative uh, we 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 are committing that yes as an organization as individuals uh, we are all committed towards it in fact navendra was talking about e waste that's something which is very essential to us uh, we have a very recognized process by which we dispose all our e waste not only in india but globally and i think we'll continue to do that with that really really thank you very much uh, and looking forward to you know maybe this again but really appreciate the one hour which you spent with us i'm sure it is sending us back with some thoughts and things for the future thank you very much recycling is cool <laughs> yes thank recycling so is cool thank you so much thank you bye thank you bye. thank bye. you bye.